a space base on Mars? In the future or in the past? There is evidence that a space base existed on the planet Mars in antiquity. And what is even more startling is that it might have been reactivated before our very own eyes. Is it possible then that what our civilization is discovering today about ourselves, our beginning, our planet, our corner of the universe, even the heavens, is a drama that could be called Genesis Revisited? Only a rediscovery of what had been known to our earliest civilizations? The last decades of the 20th century have witnessed an upsurge of human knowledge that boggles the mind. Our advances in every field of science and technology are no longer measured in centuries or decades, but in years or even months. They seem to surpass in attainment and scope anything that man has achieved in the past. Man came out of the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages, reached the Age of Enlightenment, experienced the Industrial Revolution, entered the era of high-tech, the era of genetic engineering, the era of spaceflight. Astronauts who land like eagles. In antiquity, they were called Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came. The possibility that modern science is catching up with ancient knowledge has brought mankind to the first chilling incident in a war of the worlds. It rekindles a situation that has lain dormant almost 5,500 years. The incident of the Tower of Babel. In the Babylonian version of the biblical story, the people of Babylon were building a tower whose head shall reach the heaven, in which a Shem, a space rocket, was to be installed under the direction of their supreme God. But the other deities were not amused by this foray of mankind into the space age. Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the humans were building. And he said to unnamed colleagues, this is just the beginning of their undertakings. From now on, anything that they shall scheme to do shall no longer be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they should not understand each other's speech. Genesis chapter 11. I'm Zechariah Sitchin. I devoted a lifetime to the study of ancient civilizations, ancient languages, their art, their beliefs, and the knowledge that they had. And the question is, when you study, when you look at all that, is it myth, is it mythology, or did it really happen? I believe it all really happened. You are invited to join me in a journey, in a journey in a time machine, a magical journey taking us to the past through the work and achievements of archaeology. Ancient knowledge, how much did they really know? How much do we know about them? Thanks to archaeology, we now know that man's first great civilization blossomed out almost 6,000 years ago.
older than the Greeks, older than the Mayas, older than the Incas, older than the Egyptians. The oldest civilization in our history. The people who bequeathed it to us are called Sumerians, after the name of their land Sumer, in the great plain between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, today's Iraq. The book of Genesis called that land Shinyar. For many years, the references to ancient kingdoms in old scriptures were either ignored or disbelieved, considered simply myth. We now know that they were historical records of real, flourishing and incredibly advanced cultures. We are now entering a temple that is actually 6,000 years old. It is a temple that existed in a city called Erech, uh, which until about 150 years ago was known only from the Bible, the biblical book of Genesis. And that temple was dedicated to a goddess, to a female called Inanna, known in later times as Ishtar. You can see here her features, a little damaged. Her divinity was marked by the pair of horns that she had. Uh, she held a jar with the water of life, and uh, she was surrounded as a decoration, but perhaps also symbolically, with a symbol that some refer to as entwined snakes, which was the symbol of science in, in those days, 6,000 years ago. Uh, some find in it a precursor of the Egyptian Anch, which was the symbol of life and creation. And it really was a symbol of genetic manipulation of DNA. She also engaged in other activities, among them flying in the skies of Earth and also being an astronaut almost 6,000 years ago. In ancient Mesopotamia, the secrets of celestial knowledge of astronomy were guarded, studied and carefully handed down by astronomer priests. They often kept this special knowledge on cylinder seals like this one. This clay.